futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good weekend. I wrap Stephen of Glenn and Associates with your weekend edition of your financial market wrap up for this Friday, October 19th, 2018. And as you can see, all the markets are finally settled. And what a week it was. I mean, we rocked, we rolled. There was no question about it. And the big question is for the stock indices. It seems to be being presented if you're watching financial TV on station after station as market technicians are saying, will we see another drop in the market to challenge the lows we've recently made? That's going to be the big question. So let's see if we can come up with any partial answers here to give you uh, ideas about it. As we take a look at the monthly area chart of closes, you'll notice that you still haven't come back to that monthly area chart and hit it since 2016, which continues to be a sign of strength. When you take a look at the weekly area chart of closes, you hadn't hit it since back here in April, and now you've had another one of these corrections. Now, the interesting part about the market is if you go back to 1946, you'll see that after the midterms, historically, and that doesn't mean it's going to keep working. I want to make this clear. But historically, the market after the midterm, regardless of which party wins, the market rallies into year end, and I'm talking stock indices. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Certainly getting a break like this at this point in time, going into the midterm, so only two weeks away now, important. The lower the market is, the better the chance for that probability to uh, come to fruition. So, but now. As we're under this number, that means the bias of the market when you're under the 18-week average is bearish for the time being. Let's go to the Fibonacci numbers. Notice I've got the word low to the rally high and now the correction. Now the center point right here is a 50% correction. That seems to be where the market headed on that big break that we had. We had a consolidation this week and yes, you can hit that and even go down to the second number, which would be a 62% correction. It would not be surprising. Is this in itself support in the market? Well, it's a measurement. That doesn't mean it's a support. What we have in the chart action is a pattern of higher high and a lower low. That is not a trend. But you set up a downtrend if this week's low is taken out and not the high. That would give me, in fact, you don't even have to do that. An inside week would do it, not taking out this week's high. That would set up in place lower highs. You already have the lower and low. That's always important when you're looking to see are you trending. You don't have to have that pattern. But when you get it, I pay attention to it. What else do I see in the chart? I see that the markets made an attempt this week to try to get back up to that 18-week average of closes, which I call the line in the sand. When you're under it, you have downside bias. When you're under it and you rally, it's often a resistance point. When you're over it and you break down, it's often a support point. I wish I could tell you it always works that way. It doesn't, but it's most of the time. Back up. Back up. Playing the game. That's my point. So getting to that number wouldn't be the worst thing. Then from there, you can develop other things. We'll see what happens. In terms of Bollinger Bands, you went from almost the upper Bollinger Band to the lower one in one swoop. You certainly hit them back here, and then the market broke. And momentum in the market right now is what? Pointing down. So we have downward momentum as measured by the oscillator slow stochastics. We have bias down because we're under the 18-week average of closes. We're not trending, but so what? The other two give you an idea where the momentum, if you will, of the market is. In the slow stochastics, I'll start here. Momentum is pointing down. Unlike what we just saw, this market did go from upper Bollinger Band to lower. This week, we made a run trying to get back to that 18-week moving average of closes. You missed it by about 14 points, but you can see what it was trying to do. On the pullback, I would be looking for this market to, for support at that lower Bollinger Band. 
When I come to the Dow, if I take off this week, you can see you had the big break, did not make a run to the lower Bollinger Band. You turned the momentum down. Momentum is still down. You went back to that neutral line in the sand, that 18 week moving average of closes, and now the market's got to figure out what next. Similar to the S&P, if you take out this week's high, it's just going to be an extension of the pattern of a higher high, lower low, and you're getting a bounce. Got it? If you take out this week's low, you get the pattern of lower highs with lower lows already in place, and obviously that would take place under the 18-week moving average of closes, which could add to the bearishness and might be able to set up a challenge of this number. Right now, no way to tell. You're about as neutral as you can get on this chart. The chart that has been aggressively bearish has been the Russell 2000. And this market got to the lower Bollinger Bands and kept running them. Now, if we look at the close this week, 1542.70, we're still underneath the lower band here. So that's one week under it. Last week, you were under this band. That's two. And if we come back over here, you had closed at 1639.40, which was under the lower band of 1640. So that's three weeks under it. Even on weekly charts, I count each one of the successive times closing under the band is taking away 1% of the percentage, 1% of the 5% of the time the market typically trades outside of a Bollinger Band, 95% of the time within it. So I give the market this week a 2% chance of staying under it. All it means is that I'm favor favoring a bounce. It is not a trend change. I don't see one on this chart. Don't see one developing. But this is an area that I start paying close attention to. Momentum still pointing down. In the VIX, the market has been fighting to get back inside the Bollinger Bands. It's been out of it, and it's stayed out of it. If you look at today's close at 1989, that's above the 1920. Last week, you were above it with a close of 2131 over there. And the week before, you closed uh, at 1482 within it. So you're two weeks in a row outside of it. What does that mean? Well, number one, it means the market has been strong. But as, you'll see, as you're seeing, not you'll see, the market is fighting to get back within that band. Momentum is up. Trend is up. You've taken the market out again. So we're starting to see that so far, when you narrow up this year too much, you did it here and you're doing it here, it's leading to what? Further upside bounces, not downside, upside, okay? So it's a little bit different than we were trying last year as the market was going sideways and it kept trying to break down. When you rally up in the VIX, it means stocks are trying to break. In the 10-year notes, if you take a look at this, the market's riding the lower Bollinger Band. The settlement was over the upper Bollinger, the lower Bollinger Band, just as it was here. This is still very bearish. The market has not thrown anything different. It was a breakout of a sideways action. The Fed told us this week they're going to keep going with interest rate hikes. Goldman is predicting that we're going to get five more now. One in December, four. I believe they're talking four in uh, 2019. It could be, I think it's four is what they said. So there's five more they're talking. But that was more than the market was building in. TLT, still bearish as can be. Lower highs, lower lows, riding the lower Bollinger Band. Momentum down under the 18-day average. Nothing in sight there that the market's ready to turn. The dollar index is suddenly consolidating this sideways action. It is void, I'll call it void, of a major trend other than to say the market is challenging old highs. It's over both numbers, the 100-day uh, and the 18-day average. I'll say the bias is up, the momentum flat to trying the point higher, and resistance at the upper Bollinger Band. Be interesting to see if uh, we get any word on what happened in Saudi Arabia with the new, with the prince, what goes on there, and how the markets react to this, because it's, it's a very interesting situation. In the euro currency, we've also gone flat. It's the opposite of the dollar. The market's trying to stay down here, as you can see. It's under the 18-day average of closes. It keeps grabbing support at the 100-day in the market. In the British pound, Brexit. And you're going to hear about it all through the weekend. What's going to go on? Are they going to be able to reach a deal of any type? Uh, 
it, it's it's an interesting situation. And as it's occurring, the bigger picture is sideways action right here. Now, a lot of traders are starting to already start saying, you know, either way it goes, after whatever happens, they think the market's going to get a bid in the, in the pound. I don't know if they're right or wrong. It's just the comments that I'm reading. See momentum up, trend up, and because the market's still over that 18-day average, I'm bullish at that point. Canadian dollar, now the market's starting to break apart. It's back under the 18-week average. I said day on the other one, but 18-week average, lower highs, lower lows, momentum down. This market's looking bearish. And I think the part of what's hurting this market is the lack of inflation that they're getting. We saw those reports today. What does that do to the, uh, the Canadian Central Bank? Do they really have to raise interest rates with a lack of inflation? That becomes an interesting point. In the Japanese yen, what we saw was a flight to safety in this in bonds and notes, and that kicked the market up to the combination of the 100-day average in green, the 18. The tr bigger trend is still to the downside. This is the resistance point on that chart. Bitcoin narrowing in something's going to happen here this market's getting ready and look at how it's just taken these ranges narrowed them all the way in whenever you narrow in like this and you start going sideways start watching the plays probably getting ready to take place we still are seeing brent gain on wti and why not here we are at October 19th, come the first week of November, the sanctions kick in. So the market today up to 1068, just 30 cents away from the most recent all the most recent high difference of WTI and Brent. And as you can see on the bigger picture, we've been in a corrective mode for a couple of weeks here from that big high that we got up to. We know that OPEC this week said they're not going to start talking price to us anymore. They're going to talk, is the market well supplied or not? And that's because the Trump administration wants to go after them as price manipulators. And if they mention price, it gives them the cause to do it. They want to remove a, a clause where they take away what they can do to sovereign nations by saying that. So interesting times. We'll have to adjust to all that. I see support back at the 7,700 level. The bias is up, but you have divergence. Momentum is down. In WTI crude, you fell all the way back to that 18-day average, held it. The trend's still up. You've still got higher lows, higher highs. You're over the 18-week average. However, like in the Brent, you've got divergence. Your bigger picture of momentum's pointing down. Rebob gasoline. The market got down to the lower Bollinger Band, where I think, and that's what I've been telling my subscribers, that as a chartist, I think the chart, the shorts were covering again right against that number. Each time you've hit it recently, that's been the pattern that we've seen. In that gas, you've stayed over the uh, upper Bollinger Band. Today, you finished at 325. That number's 32060. Last week, you finished out at uh, 316.10 over the band. That's two weeks in a row. This week, you finished uh, right here at 314.30 over the band. That's three weeks, not here. So I give it a 2% chance this week as my rule of thumb that the market so we'll only close outside of the Bollinger Bands to the upper downside consecutively no more than 5% of the time especially and I take away a percentage point of each of that for that. So in other words, three times in a row closing over it leaves a 2% chance. You'll say what happens if it goes beyond it? I go, well it goes beyond it. This is not a sign of weakness. This is a sign of strength. The question is, is the market ready for a setback? That's all that it boils down to. You know, I talk a lot here about these different guides, and I'm getting ready to do a whole new series right now, by the way, on brand new indicators that I haven't shown you. So get ready for those. But these are, this is a great way to catch up with all this. And we're also rebuilding our futures trading kit. It's completely new. It's going to be a really good look for you, not just look what it contains. So that's getting ready and we should have that very shortly. But this is a great thing to start with. This will be in there. Why not take advantage of it? Get these two large brochures from our good friends at Modern Trader. Just give us a call. You can go to our website over the weekend, of course. Click on it, Guide to Technical Indicators. You can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube. Sign up for that and everything else you want. I'm I. Rapstein. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday.